Hello, and welcome to The Great Beyond, an Is This Good companion pod where we follow up on last week's episode, answer listener questions, and catch up with each other. And, of course, the person I'm catching up with is Jason Doyle. Hi, JD. Hello. Uh, Good to see you. This is the second episode of The Great Beyond. Did our first one last week. Um, It was supposed to be a mini-sode. It went about an hour. (laughs) How confident are you feeling that this second episode will actually be mini Oh, not confident at all. And I don't know why you want it to be mini. I'm like, what's the point of that? Um, So that I could say mini-sodes, because I already said they were going to be mini-sodes. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had the nerve. Trey Kirby, our own Trey Kirby, was in the comments saying, this isn't a mini-sode. <laughs> uh, and the way I'm interpreting that is that, as you know, when we used to work together, a frequent note of mine would be, <laughs> why is this so long? Like, yeah. You know, let's tighten this up a bit. Let's keep it light but keep it tight we can Mm. be tight and be light a lot of people think that if you want to be light you got to meander but i think you could be light and tight yeah anyways he was making fun of me so that that was an 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 indignity well so i can't go through that again but that's that is the inside joke around here it's not even an inside joke it's uh let's cut stuff out uh let's do a matt austin let's be like matt Let's put our Matt hat on and uh, take something out of this show. Like, that's that's what you're known for. Well, it's funny because even I was listening to uh, No Dunks today and Skeets had been gone because he was running the Boston Marathon. He came back and his first comment at the start of the show was, <laughs> why were your episodes so long? <laughs> it's like one less person. Some nights there was like two games. Well, what were you talking about for so long? <laughs> Hey, man, you know, there's there's more air in the rooms, and uh, the guys are going to suck it up, you know? Like, they're just going to, that's all, that's all it is. That's right, that's right. Like, when the, the washing machine and the uh, the vacuum come out in, like, the 50s or whatever it was, people are like, you're going to save so much time. But then it's just like, no, the more time you save doing those things, the more you have to do other things. That's right. So, you know, there's no, yeah, exactly. The oxygen will get sucked up, but... Just two of us here, and there's always only two of us here. I guess except on the normal show when there's a third person, <laughs> sometimes third a fourth person. person. Yeah. Um, but this will be a mini-sode, maybe. Okay. A half pint, right. as we said last week. <laughs> I, I can't. I got a lot of things to do after this, JD. I can't start getting drunk, okay? I can't have... <laughs> I can't Come have, on, man. It's 420, and we're almost at 420, so... Um, yeah, okay. So this is a, a pinner, as they say in the weed world. <laughs> oh. Okay. Do I don't know what that, that is. Uh, I'm like not a, in the weed world, really. Um, you know, back in the day when we used to smoke joints as kids, like there'd be like a joint, you know, like a regular joint. Okay. Sometimes a blunt. That's uh, a biggie. That's right. A, yeah, biggie rolled in different paper. Uh-huh. Uh, but sometimes, I don't know, maybe this is a Canadian terminology. A pinner would just be like a really small joint. Like, let's say you were just going to the cinema, you know, <laughs> and you wanted to hit a quick <laughs> pinner in the alley. <laughs> the cinema. Yes, let's hit a pinner on our way to the cinema. <laughs> on our way to see Can't Hardly Wait at the cinema. Um, did anything good or not good happen to you this week? Uh, I do have a not good story, but that's for off the air because too many... That's the problem with uh, with uh, this show. It's Why are you universal? teasing us with this if you're not telling us? I don't know. I can't help You could have just not said anything. I could have said nothing. Now everyone's going to wonder. I, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting is this good quandary, but it's too fresh. And I think okay. there are people in in my world that I think might listen to the show and it might hit too close. Not not friends, friends, but acquaintances and it might hit too close. Okay. Well, the, I have honestly, I have is this good where I'm like, this would be really good for the show. Can't do it yet. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Too, it's, it's too, too fresh. Yeah. Not, frankly, not that anyone I know really <laughs> listens to this show. I, I, okay. A few people. I know a lot of people. Right. Friends, a lot of people. Yeah. Less than 1% of those people listen to this show. Right. Right. My and friend Ned, he listens every week. Always, always has a comment. Shout out to you, Ned. <laughs> Zach, who you know. Oh, I know Zach. Uh, he listens with his oh. wife Amy. Oh, I, be- I believe they listen every week. Okay. I don't know. Maybe they're behind. And right. some other people. Okay. But mostly, mostly what I get when I see people is, uh, uh, how's the show going? And uh, right. I'm like, oh, you know, it's going fine. You know, it's going well. And then they're like, 
yeah, I haven't caught up on this week's. <laughs> and I'm like, no, um, no, what you mean to say is you haven't listened to the last 10 episodes. Right. You listened to the first one just so you could say you listened, and then you tuned out. Yeah. You know, which is fine. Fair enough. I mean, there's so many podcasts out there. Yeah, but how we many got... podcasts hosted by your friend? Yeah, that's a, also a good point. If anyone that I know does anything... Okay, look, here's a great example. We met in 2001 at Ryerson University, me, yeah. you, Skeets, and Tass. And then I went off to law school, 2005, mm-hmm. yes. back to Montreal. So you guys were still in Toronto. I wasn't seeing you. 2006, you start the Basketball Jones podcast. I don't know anything about basketball. I don't care about basketball. I yeah. listened to every single episode because you guys were my <laughs> friends, and yeah. I wanted to hear what my friends were up to. Right. And then it came, ended up coming in handy when I moved back to Toronto in 2009, and I you know, started working on the show, and it wasn't like, oh, shit, I don't know what's been said for the past you know, three years. Right. So listen to the show, my friends, in case you're <laughs> on it in three years. <laughs> It is it is true like that you are an anomaly in that sense because everybody else in my life also they don't know about basketball they don't follow basketball they have no interest in basketball and so they simply just never listen to the show because it's it is a very basketball heavy show yeah but but of basketball heavy shows there's you know there's meanderings there's off topics there's right. Purposely things that have nothing to do with basketball that are discussed, and they talk about their lives. You know, like that's not the main thrust of the podcast, but inevitably you will hear about like that's how I knew Skeets was running the Boston Marathon. <laughs> right. I mean, I guess I knew at some point, but I'd kind of forgotten that it was yeah, Patriots Day was coming up. Um, so I heard on the show, and then I texted him. I was like, "Hey, good luck this weekend." Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so, all this to say, uh, I did have something good happen, but I do have to break one of my rules, which is not to talk about pickleball. Uh-huh. But it's really the only good thing that happened other than, you know, a very productive week here in the uh, Classic Factory. Yeah, don't give me that bullshit. But one one more thing, though. Are you willing to make a promise on the great beyond that this is this good topic that's too fresh for you, that you will eventually bring it up on the show? Or is Guaranteed. It, guaranteed? Yes. Okay, that's something yeah. to look forward to, people. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so go on um, with your uh, precious pickleballs. <laughs> so I went I, – I, I haven't been playing pickleball because I've been too, too busy, right? We were down to one car. There's uh, We had so lots of car trouble. Mm-hmm. We're in Atlanta. Lots of stuff happening. Uh, and so I, I finally got to go – I went to an emerging beginner's pickleball clinic mm-hmm. last night, which was great. It was great to be out. It was a beautiful evening. Anyway, there's I like four... the term emerging. First of all, like I know, you yeah. know, it's like um, <laughs> like emerging artists, like That's at right. the gallery. This gallery is um, you know for emerging artists. <laughs> it's their right. first vernissage. But anyways, <laughs> tell us about your pick, your pickleball yeah. vernissage. Right. It's it's literally for people who know the rules, but it basically suck. They mm-hmm. still suck. And mm-hmm. and do you still uh, suck? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm garbage. Uh-oh. Rachel's good. She's really good, but she plays every day. Like I, and I haven't. I literally haven't played in two months. Okay. Um. Anyway, so I went to this thing, and uh, we were warming up. We we're dinking back and forth, mm-hmm. and there's a a married couple on the other side. They're 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 against me and this other person, and uh, the they were older, but not that much older than me. Anyway, I must have lumbered or made some sort of, you know, I kind of lumber around Frankenstein-like anyways, you know, like. <laughs> With I'm the, not bolts, the, the bolts, the bolts in your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, very stiff. And we're warming up as well. Uh, and I must have sort of made a herky-jerky motion, and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And this is kind of a very out-of-shape guy who's <laughs> maybe five years older than me. Maybe. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, he could be my age for all I know. But anyways, he's, he goes, oh, yeah. I've never met this person. I barely know his name. I was literally just introduced to him. And he goes, oh, yeah, you got the same problem as me. You just can't move around like you used to. I'm like, oh, bitch, shut up. What? We just met. And also, we're just starting here. I'm just. Uh, You're lingering. And, and, and fair enough. Maybe he's right. But hello. Like. Rude, right? Very rude. And what he doesn't know is that you never could move, okay? It's not that you <laughs> it's like you can't move like you used to anymore. It's that you never could do it. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, not to not to get into the pickleball of it, but I lit him up. Like, oh, yeah, lit buddy. him up. 
Uh, and it was so very, very satisfying. But he's a nice guy. And uh, in the end, he was a nice guy. And we were, we were fine. But I was just like, God damn it. Did you trash I, talk him? No, no, never. God. But he insulted you. You didn't give him one, like, scoreboard. <laughs> or I don't know. If, is there a score? I guess there's no scoreboard. In Not a board. It's say. in your head. You have to point to your head and go, <laughs> scoreboard. <laughs> Yeah, I should have I should have got gotten a little more in his face. I'm so like it's so I'm so insufferably Canadian out there as well. It's yeah. just like, oh, sorry, sorry, to, I'm in the wrong spot. I'm sorry. You know, like none of those motherfuckers apologized to me once. Mm-hmm. Not that they needed to necessarily, but I just felt the need always to be like, ah, sorry. Uh, I'm very in- uncomfortable in my own skin, and I don't move like I used to apparently. <laughs> okay, but what after? So, but you're saying after a warm up, you were ski oh, bopping all over that court. Destroyed him. Destroyed him. Again, now let's also emerged- be honest. The part of the point of pickleball is there's not a lot of terrain to cover. Right. Yeah. It's like this guy was. He was obviously a tennis player. Like a, mm-hmm. uh, he played tennis his whole life. Mm-hmm. And that was to his detriment on the pickleball court because oh, you know swinging you got to play close. What's that? He was swinging too hard. Sw- uh, swinging too hard and staying at the back of the court. You got to like serve and then you get right up to the kitchen line, which is that front line. That right. Okay. That but the serve and volley game is a well known part of tennis. Right. But it doesn't really apply to pickleball necessarily. Why? You're saying after the first if, shot, if you you're return at the, the serve and then you yeah. go to volley. You go uh, to the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, but line. you're volley, but you really want to get a dinking game going. And that's when the strategy comes in. Dinking is way different. Okay. Okay. Anyways, this is what I didn't want to happen, which was falling okay. into the trap of talking about okay, pickleball. If this goes long, if this goes <laughs> from half pint to full pint, <laughs> we're, we're you already will be there. Blamed. Pickleball we're already will be there. Pickleball this is what's already blamed. happened. The bartender has, you know, uh, started the Guinness pint and has gone off to make uh, a rum and coke or something else, mm-hmm. you know, and then it's just unattended filling up, and that's what's already happened. <laughs> it's a lot of thick. <laughs> head <laughs> that's right <laughs> like like when when they just um when you order a guinness at a bar and they're like either the person that doesn't know how to pour guinness or it's like a new tap and they do that thing and you could watch them and it's just filling up with so much foam uh. and then they get another glass and then they're like pouring the foam into the other glass and then they're refilling the first glass but then it's like still foam and then they're just letting it wait and then in another glass they're filling another one and then combining the two together uh. Uh, it's, it's so painful to watch. I, okay, I well, that's what your pickleball stories are like, JD. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I knew it. I knew it. I, that's why I have it as a rule. No, I'm anyways. just kidding. I haven't played yet, but I am excited to play. Should we play well, we should when play I'm in what? Atlanta? Yes, absolutely. Let's do, do it. Do you have a racket for me? Yeah, yeah. We got, we got like... Okay, I honestly racket. don't have time because I have to go to a wedding while we're there. Oh, but you're already I, backing out. It was I'm, your no, idea. No, I was going to say, I barely have time to see people, but I'm considering it doing it just for the content. Wow. Let's do it. Okay, let's we'll talk about that off mic. All right. When you tell me the story <laughs> that will eventually come up. Um, okay, I have two good things. Number one, did my taxes. Congratulations. At the last minute. Um, and? Uh, you know, uh, thank you to the good robots at TurboTax for, for <laughs> <laughs> guiding me through with a steady hand. My taxes Sweet. are not very complicated currently. Um, which, but are you <laughs> getting money back or are you do you owe? Uh, uh, no. Ah. No. But we're even. Even Steven. Even Steven. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's where you want to be. Uh, yeah, that's where you want to be. Um, because otherwise you know, you've given the government a loan, they say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, okay, fine. This is, this brings up a not good thing. Okay. And uh, you don't have this problem. But the, the deductions portion of TurboTax makes me feel like garbage. Because they're like... <laughs> You know, and it's all like cheery, like, you know, millennial graphic design. And it's like, did you buy a house this year? And I'm like, no. no. And it's like, <laughs> and then it goes shook to the next thing. Did you get married this year? I'm like, no. <laughs> Do you have any dependents? You know, anyone that depends on you because you're a responsible adult? Maybe someone that in return loves you unconditionally? No. <laughs> I'm a child. Okay, TurboTax. TurboTax should just have a like a, a button you can click at the start that's like man child. It should be your sad zip code. man. It just should be your zip code. It's L A. Okay, skip to the bottom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh god, that's a whole other story. We'll we'll get to that probably eventually. But 
I don't, uh, I'm going to get depressed if we start talking about that. <laughs> okay, keep it, keep it positive. That'll go full, full episode. That'll go double, <laughs> double length LP. <laughs> That'll go like full quadrophenia. The second half of the album is, is what people refer to as the difficult side. <laughs> That's just me uh, going through depression. Uh, okay, so another good thing. I saw an old uh, friend of ours, an old oh, colleague yeah. from Ryerson, speaking of Ryerson early in the show, Phil. Phil the other C. Phil. <laughs> yeah, not to be confused with Phil E, a.k.a. J. E. Skeets. Mm-hmm. This is Phil C, a.k.a. BPC, a.k.a. the Big Phil Combo. Um <laughs> He was in uh, Torrance for work, so I drove down to see him. Nice. And, um, you know, my takeaways are his arms are really big from rock climbing. Oh, okay. And now I'm thinking, I got to get into, I got to get into bouldering, <laughs> which is something I've wanted to do for a long time, but this might have been the push that I needed to uh, start solving some boulder problems, as they so call is, them. So is he, like, free soloing, or is no, he's it... not free soloing. <laughs> do you know what free soloing is? Oh, it's like going up a rock. It's rock climbing. No, JD, it's jerking off on a mountain. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, well, free free soloing is no rope. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't well, want you to do that. If it's a boulder, yes. If it's a boulder, yeah. But a boulder is like four. You know, it could be four feet off the ground. There's okay. there's free soloing, which was at what Alex Honnold did in the movie yeah. Free Solo, which is he climbed Yosemite with no rope. Yeah. Thousands of feet up, so you know, instant death. Um, or unfortunately not instant death, long death as you fall, no, fully knowing you're about to die, which, Ugh. which has happened to a lot of people actually. Yeah. Um, and then there's free climbing, which is where you're, you're not using anything above you to help you go up, but you uh, still have a rope and then you're right. putting in, you're clicking it in as you get to a point and then you're still climbing with no clicking above you. So you can still fall, but there's yeah. a rope so you don't go too far. Yeah. Um, then there's like aid climbing. And then there's mm-hmm. bouldering. Anyways, okay. as you can see, I know a uh, concerning know amount about rock that. climbing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but it was like a pandemic thing where it was like, I'm stuck inside. I got, just was watching every climbing documentary available, found out that you could, there was a series of documentaries on Red Bull, the Red Bull app uh, for yeah, free. Okay. You know, the only thing you had to do was chug a Red Bull every time. <laughs> 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 there was facial recognition software that made sure you were... You're getting your full <laughs> dose of guarana before so, you okay. watched. <laughs> so what? It, so what? It's rock climbing like in a facility with a yeah, guy yeah, yeah, yeah. This it. is indoors. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. No, but I, I wouldn't even. I, I would just do bouldering, so I could just go in alone and do it. I, I don't even need someone to belay me. Though there are auto belays, we don't need to get into it. Speaking of which, are you watching uh, Hundred Foot Wave, or did you watch the first season? I watched a few episodes. Yeah, didn't I loved it. Oh, okay. The second season is out now. Oh, I, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah cool. this is my favorite show. It's great. I love it. I mean, obviously there's Succession, but I love like, God damn it, I love this show. And if you have seen the show, I me- I met Garrett McNamara. Really? I was at um, uh, a clothing like an outdoor clothing show for work, uh-huh. and he just walked by me, and it was like like Brad Pitt had walked by. Wow. And luckily, like <laughs> except like Brad Pitt, everyone would stop Brad Pitt and ask for a selfie, but. Most people did not know who he was. He was with right. his wife, who's also in the show. And I was like, yeah. I, I mean, I would never normally talk to a celebrity, but right. I, I halted them. <laughs> <laughs> and we caught fire. Uh, okay, anyways, why was I talking about surfing? Oh, because rock climbing surfing. Right. So you, so you saw Phil C. I saw Phil C. I almost ruined the whole thing because this is like a, a peek into my brain. So he's there. We get there. Like, he, he has Ubered there. And uh, I show up. The host takes us in, and they're like, uh, inside or outside? And, you know, because I made the reservation, he's asking me. Right. And I see kind of outside, there's like a, a patio, but it's fully covered. Okay. So it's, it's like dark, and, and there's no atmosphere. So I was like, no, let, like, let's sit inside. So we go inside. The restaurant's relatively empty. It's like 6 o'clock. And uh, as we sort of walk, he's walking us to our table. I see that on the other end of the restaurant... There's a door, and there's more of, like, an outdoor patio. Okay, yeah. And there's st- still a bit of sun. And I'm thinking, because Phil is from Toronto, Toronto. I'm, like, yeah. thinking, like, oh, maybe he wants to eat outside. So as we're walking, I'm like, oh, sorry, do you want to do you want to eat outside? And the waiter's like, oh, you want to go outside? And uh, Phil's like, uh, you know, I don't know, up to you. I'm like, no, uh, up to you. And and I, I don't know why, but in my head I was thinking, oh, he definitely wants to be outside. He's coming right. from Canada. 
He's in. <laughs> he's on the West Coast. He definitely wants to sit outside. Uh, and I kind of wanted to sit inside, but I'm like, okay, for for him, he doesn't want to say anything because I already said let's sit inside. So I go, oh yes, uh, yeah, let's just go outside, sir, if you don't mind. So he takes us outside. And uh, I'm, I'm like, because I feel embarrassed that I've like now changed my mind already twice. <laughs> I tell the waiter like, oh, you know, he's from he's Canada. He's going home. So, you know, want to get him some sun in before he goes home. And then Phil goes, you know, it's, uh, it was hotter in Toronto last week than it was in L.A. And I'm like, oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, it was like th- uh, 30 degrees Celsius. I'm like, yeah. oh, OK. So the guy sits us down. And almost immediately I'm like. I'm freezing. Like, you know, it's like 60 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit here. And I'm like, uh, you know, from, L- you know, lived in LA long enough that I have no viscosity in my blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, we're catching up and Phil's talking to me and like half my brain is like listening to Phil talk. And the other half of my brain's going like, the fuck did I do? Why did I sit outside? And now I'm like, Can- I can't, now I can't go back inside. <laughs> And, the, you know, we haven't seen each other in a while, so we're catching up. And we're doing that thing where the waiter is like, uh, all right, what can I get you? I'm like, oh, we need a couple more minutes. Yeah, then he yeah. comes back a couple more minutes. It's like, we haven't even looked. I'm so sorry. He comes back again. I'm like, maybe we could just order a beer, but we haven't even looked for food. <laughs> so now, like, things are getting awkward with the waiter. Finally, I, like I said, I'm like, how would you feel if the next time the guy comes back, <laughs> I say, you know what, sir, we've made a mistake. Can we go inside? Uh, and uh, I was like, eh, I don't know. I mean, if you want to, but I'm fine. And I'm like, really? Because you're wearing short sleeves and I'm wearing long sleeves. It's like, don't put it on me. I'm Canadian. I'm fine in short sleeves. I'm like, all right, all right. Anyways, he's got those so, big arms. He's not putting, he's, he's not he's covering got those, those cannons. He's got those bouldering <laughs> canyons. Anyways, I said, no, I can't do it. I can't tell the waiter we're moving inside. There's already a drink on the table. Uh, anyway, so that's, I almost ruined dinner, but it was a lovely. Uh, so you stayed outside? We stayed outside. Oh my God. Um, but it was great seeing Phil, unlike Gideon, to give an update from last okay, week. Okay, yeah, let's go. Uh, if you'll remember, Gideon was the old camp friend I haven't seen in, like, 20 years, who happens to live in L.A. now, so we went out together, and then we went out together once, and then we planned this other dinner, because our other friend from camp, who's also here, is about to give birth, or his wife's about to give birth, mm-hmm. so we wanted to do it before he gave birth, and... Gideon was very specific. I need to do it on this date. It needs to be at this time, at this place, because I'm going to be running late at the studio. Mm-hmm. We go. He doesn't show up. He doesn't text us. The next day, he doesn't text us. And as I said on the show, I know I should just let this lie, but I got itchy <laughs> texting fingers, and I try and talk me out of texting him and saying, what's up? Right. Anyways, I didn't want to come at him like you know very aggressively, so I thought about it a lot. Especially when there wasn't a text the next day from him. And then the day after, there was still no text. And I was like, oh, wow. He thinks he's gotten away with it. He thinks there's zero accountability here. Well, he's got another thing coming to him. <laughs> so I decided that the best thing to do would just be to text him. Yo, Gideon, you alive? Because it, it's kind okay, of yeah, like yeah. shows concern, but it, yep. it, it's also kind of abrupt. It's an in-your-face kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but at least there's plausible deniability that it's right. like not aggressive. He just writes back, OMG, guys, I'm so sorry. I was in New York for family stuff, then had to stay for work, and my girlfriend's family had an emergency. It's been a fucking week. I'm so sorry, frowny face. How was the pizza? LOL. I didn't respond. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Frank did respond because Frank's, uh, I guess, much nicer than me. Mm. Uh. Frank even thanked him for the recommendation. I wouldn't wow. call it a recommendation, Frank. I would call it <laughs> a, a demand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, anyways, that's the end. Uh, that's the end of the Gideon saga. Wow. saga. Okay, all right, great. So over twenty minutes in, some quick I'm, housekeeping. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you confronted him. He deserved it. He did deserve it. Um, okay, send us emails at isthisgoodpod at gmail dot com. We could always use some good emails. I think, as I mentioned before, I respond to every email. I, I knocked down the list, JD. I didn't get to inbox zero, but I'm getting close. Nice. Uh, but hey, make it harder for me. Send me emails sent with uh, <laughs> tasty topics. Subscribe to Is This Good on YouTube. Is This Good is on YouTube. If you didn't know that, we have a lot more people that listen than subscribe on YouTube. So I would say, even if you don't watch it on YouTube, go over and subscribe. Yeah, you have it an does account. us a favor. Do it anyways. Yeah, just do it anyways. It's not going to hurt you. 
Uh, and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Always nice to see those. And of course, join our Patreon, patreon.com slash is this good. I want to point out that our next live stream hangout is Tuesday. Tuesday, JD. That's so this soon. Tuesday. That's like four wow. days. April 25th. That's this Tuesday, 8.30 Eastern. Sign up before then, and if you do, we send you out a link, you hop on a Zoom, and um, we just chat, kind of like this, except you're there. You could show your face. You could not show your face. Yeah. You could type out questions for us. You could ask us questions face-to-face, and uh, yeah, it was fun last time. I'm sure it'll be fun this time. It's great talking to the audience. I love talking to the audience. Yeah, um, and hopefully there'll be more people in that Patreon tier even this time. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. I haven't looked, but haven't I'm going to assume there are. <laughs> um, all right. So what do I want to talk about? Okay, let's talk about this one question. Oliver M. Uh, emailed and said, I'd be curious to hear on the show what your process is for finding your guests. Mm. Um, I mean, that's a fair question because sometimes these guests have really nothing in common with each other. Right. Uh, but different ways. So, like, let's take the no dunks people out of it. And sure. if you're new to the show, like, this show started in the no dunks feed over yes. the the late summer, the fall was it? Yeah, the late summer. yeah late summer, like August September. Yeah, of last um, year. And when it started, we just had the no dunks guys on in in various configurations. And but since then, partly because I want to have other people on i want to expand the audience like maybe fans of those people will listen um partly because maybe i'm interested in those guests and obviously partly because the no dunks guys are busy i mean yeah. you're a no dunks guy you're not busy though you can come on every week <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, i have free calendar your calendar is free <laughs> i'm the uh, yeah i'm the one that's like no sorry jd i can't record at that time <laughs> work around my schedule um so i did a little i did a little math i did a little analytics Yes. So we've had 18 non-No Dunks guests on this show. Okay. Name them all. No, just kidding. Uh, Who? 11 of 18 of them I've never met before. Right. So those were cold calls or? Complete cold uh, calls. Wow. Um, Respect to them. Well, really respect to me, J.D. I have to get over a lot of fear of like (laughs) um, DMing people I don't know. Uh, Honestly, like booking guests, I will say, is like the worst absolute worst part of the show oh 100 percent. I, I hate it like i don't like reaching out to strangers and even if it's someone i vaguely know like you know i don't know like matt bonner we had on you know right he's a friend but i never see him i go, I go years without seeing him or speaking to him it's not like we we text a lot right so it's still like i feel like okay he knows me well enough that if he doesn't want to do it, he probably just can't say no like or not answer me like you know and then i start to I, I basically think anyone that agrees to come on does so out of guilt and doesn't actually want to do it so that's helpful. well i guess i mean it's in the when you're when you're dealing with people in the comedy world they all have podcasts and they yes, all absolutely. and they, they and they know other comedians and all those other comedians have a podcast they're much more likely to go on those people show a because they know them b because they may feel more obligated right um but, I mean, that's the other thing. I like having comedians on because I don't speak to these people before the show. And, I, again, 11 out of 18 I've never even spoken to. We we have zero chemistry. Um, so sometimes it's good to just have a comedian on because I'm just like, at least I know that in theory they're funny. And at least I know that they've been – they've held the mic before. Right. And yeah. at least I know they might be talkative. Right. Um, so that's why I try, to, I try to go from the comedy world. But, I mean, yeah, I don't know a ton of comedians. No. I mean, if I know a comedian, they've probably been on already. <laughs> um, so related. So who? To, yeah, so who ahead. have you? Who have you reached out to that hasn't? That's like not said anything. Yeah. Um. Let me see. Pull up the old DMs. Like, uh, like, have you reached out to like Tom Segura or any of that? Anyone? No. That I, level? I'm reaching out at a level below that. To be frank, don't be insulted if you've been on the show. <laughs> um. Uh, like Lisa Traeger is someone who's super funny, um, but she has not responded. I mean, Andy Kindler, he's, you know, he's an older yeah. comedian, yeah, um, but has been like a long, long time favorite of mine. He no response from respond. Andy Kindler. Hmm. Okay. Um, 
I'm wondering if I'm even seeing the people that I've emailed or DM'd and haven't responded. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got to honestly just get better at, like, coming up with a list. And even if that list, I'm like, no, these people aren't going to want to come on. And just doing it. Right. And seeing who I hear back from. Right. Um, so Suri on Discord asks, JD mentioned you were stressed in the last episode and talked about the vibes. I'd like to know more. <laughs> First of all, JD, how dare you go on your other silly little podcast and talk shit about me behind your back, behind my back? <laughs> oh, okay. So now I, yeah, I was confused. I was like, when did I mention that? I don't even remember saying that you were stressed on this show, mm -hmm. but I no, guess no, you I said it on no dunks. I, I said it on no dunks. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Well, why was I, should... I stressed? You were stressed because, um, because of the ever uh, uh, episode. You were sort of, you were tired. I was tired, and we sort of walked away from it, going, "They were great," but it just it was there was a weird vibe. It felt weird mm -hmm. over yeah, the interwebs, true. right? So. Yeah. I mean, how many times do we stop the show and I go, JD, we killed it! <laughs> nice, this one's never gonna happened. Kill, this one's going to crush. No, that never happens. <laughs> uh, it's just always like, I hate hearing myself talk. And honestly, it's hard when you're... I mean, I go back and listen to the shows partly for uh, process reasons. Like, I need to like maybe find a clip or if there's like an, an edit here or there that I mm -hmm. need to, to put in. So I, I always listen to the show, even though I, I hate the sound of my voice. But I will say that when I listen back, I'm like, oh, this is always better than I thought. Because when it's right. in the show, I'm thinking like, okay, what am I going to say next? Or yep. uh, is there a delay here? Or um, is this person having a bad time? And uh, I mean, that's kind of where what I was thinking about with Ever because they were very funny. Yes. But I had seen them on stage before, and they were very ebullient, very, like, effervescent, hard-charging. And duh, like, I know that comedians have a thing called a persona, that they're right. not going to be the exact <laughs> same when they come on their show. But they were, like, super chilled and relaxed, and that's totally fine. I mean, you don't really want someone that's going to be, quote-unquote, super on. Yeah. So your so the issue was that ever came on and you were expecting them to be this sort of bombastic. I know that's that's a negative thing to say now, but uh, uh, as you said, effervescent personality. But they just weren't like that. So you were thinking, oh, they're not having a good time. Yeah, they're they're they having a terrible time. They just don't want to be here. They yeah. don't want to be here. Yeah. Um, and then I listened to it back and I was like, oh, this is. Not only is this totally fine, it's funny. And it's a different energy than most shows, and I like that. Yeah, no. Yeah, um, it was great. But, uh, yeah, hey. Only a few minutes till this show ends, and I say to you <laughs> after it's self <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> All right, let's move on to the comment of the week. I'm cheating here because I have two comments of the week. Number one is, and I'm going to butcher this name, from Dobromir Gospodinov. Wow. Okay. But it's not right. I said it's super Russian. It's not Russian as, as you're about to see. <laughs> so remember on the Ever Show that we were just talking about, at the start, they were telling a story about how they had kept applying to Just for Laughs and they hadn't made it. Yeah. And they kind of gave up and then stopped giving a shit. And then that's when they got this audition. Right. But the audition was in this room where they had given out free tickets to people just to fill the audience. And somehow right. there was a preponderance of <laughs> Bulgarian tourists in the front row that didn't have a very firm grasp on the English language. So weren't laughing very much at ever right. set and ever was concerned in the end, they ended up getting just for laughs. But, uh, we were asking, Oh, then are you going to go to Bulgaria? So Dobromir writes in, uh, this was a YouTube comment and says, Extremely happy to represent all the Bulgarian listeners in this comment. Wow. So I was like, cool, we got a, a listener in Bul <laughs> Bulgaria. I'm going to pass that on to Ever so they know that when they go. Um, and then there was like in a, some kind of Cyrillic looking language. I mean, maybe it is Cyrillic. I mean, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but a phrase. So I copy pasted it into uh, Google Translate. Okay. And I was waiting. I was like, oh, this is, must be something super interesting. Like maybe it's the slogan <laughs> for Bulgaria or something. And this was the translation. We are every kilometer. Huh. Can you make heads or tails of that? Well, what do you think that could mean? So that's a Bulgarian model? No, I have no idea. It's just a... Yeah. I just copy-pasted what he wrote. We are every kilometer. We are every... 
Is that like we're everywhere? No, that doesn't even make sense. We are every cl- okay. Like everywhere you go, every step you take, we're there. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to write back Is in. Is it and like tell an insurance what company motto or something? Yeah. Or? <laughs> what if it? <laughs> what if he's like, this is a way to get free advertising. <laughs> Uh, okay, so thanks to Dovermir. Good to know we have people in Bulgaria. And if you're listening from a far-flung country that we wouldn't expect you're listening from, let us know. Yeah, please. Uh, okay, and this is the second one. This is an email, but this is all the email says. It's from Henry H. We'll write more later. That's how the email starts. We'll write more later, but in the meantime, just FYI, I love it. I suppose it is the show. I also like that you're my age and you look good and young. <laughs> <laughs> And then it says, complimenting someone on their looks that you don't know. Is this good? Wow. So I wrote back, of course it's good. I, yeah. I, mean, who, I don't know right. how you know my exact age. It is forty. <laughs> it is 41. Uh, Mr. TurboTax, if you're asking, no, I don't have a house. No, I don't. I'm not married. No, I don't have any dependents. Okay? Hard to deduct. Um, all right, JD, one thing we have to do. Yes. Is we have to thank the goats. Love it. Let's do it. Okay, who are the goats, JD? They are the top tier of the Patreon uh, patrons. Mm-hmm. Patreon yeah, exactly. patrons. So we have I keep three calling. Tiers. I keep saying. I keep referring to the patrons as patreons, which is stupid. I think it's okay. I think is that's it? fine. Well, because the I, top... I don't like calling them patrons. I'll be honest with you. That's why. I mean, peahounds. Yeah, we're not like the Medici's. Like, right? We're not doing. We're not. You're not an emerging <laughs> artist that we're uh, sponsoring. So I, that's why, yeah, they're the peahounds. Um, but there's three <laughs> tiers on Patreon if you haven't been. There's good, great, and goat. And one of the perks of the goat, which is the highest tier, is you get thanked once a month on a show. So here's how I'm going to thank them, J.D. Okay. By giving them good, uh-huh, good, yes. good wishes. Oh, okay. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to say this in a soothing voice. <clears throat> there's only six of these, don't worry. <laughs> Zachary H., it's getting warm out. You'll put on a pair of shorts you haven't worn since last winter, and not only will they fit perfectly, you'll find a $5 bill in the pocket. <laughs> Even better, it'll be the cargo pocket, which means you're wearing cargo shorts. Okay, Justin L., my good wish, you will start a crisp, clean new notebook this week and bask in the feeling of possibility for all the fascinating creative ideas you'll fill it with. Brilliant doodles, just amazing ideas you'll probably win a macarthur genius grant jacob g you'll fall asleep in freshly washed sheets on a chilly desert night and those sheets are still warm from the dryer the thread count at least 600 sure there's ones with higher thread counts but above 600 they say it doesn't matter so why spend money doesn't matter david w my good wish for you is you will find a bakery in Arkansas with delicious treats where everything is gluten-free. I know that sounds very specific, but I know David W. He's a friend of mine, and I know he's in Arkansas, <laughs> and I know he's gluten-free, and he's not taking it well. Danny S., <laughs> you will wake up tomorrow, check your phone, see your morning meeting is canceled, and you will immediately go right back to bed. Like, immediately. Uh, uh. And you will have an amazing dream. Dry or wet, your choice, okay? That's not for me to say. <laughs> uh, Mayor... You will have strong enough in-flight Wi-Fi to join our live stream this Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. J.D., if you remember, Mayor joined our last live stream from an airplane. Awesome. Um, And uh, I I guess actually that his live stream was – I'm going to stop talking to the voice. I guess the live stream, the Wi-Fi was strong enough because he was on. Okay. Right. I'm going to change it to the Wi-Fi will be strong enough and you will be sitting alone in your row so you Mm. won't feel awkward chiming in because he was sitting in between two people. Yeah, in the middle seat. If you're going to join a live stream – Pony up for the for the aisle. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Hey, hey, don't. No, just what kidding. Do you mean don't pony do that. up. Like pay, you know, reserve the seat. Oh, I see, I see. But don't Man, do that. Give us that he's, money. He's spending all his money on being a goat. That's right. That's so those are those are six goats, JD. If you want to join Patreon in any capacity, as you just heard, there's three categories, three tiers. Go to patreon.com slash is this good. But a sincere thank you to the goats for uh, having faith in us. Yeah. They spent that money when they didn't know what we were doing, what this thing was. But we, we do sincerely thank them. Uh, I want to say listen to next week's show. That's coming out very early on Monday. Our guest is Daniel Ralston. 
uh, you're going to love him. He's, he's, uh, that's, he wouldn't count for the people that aren't friends of mine as right. guests, because I do know Daniel. Uh, Daniel's uh, a really great writer, specifically a really great music writer, and he has a couple podcasts coming out of like really, really fascinating um, insider music stories, like basically untold mysteries from the music world. So we'll get into that a bit. We talked about keeping gifts from your ex girlfriend or you know your ex-partner doing the wave at sporting events bartender complaints because that's the way that uh, in between writing assignments daniel's a bartender at some fancy places he's had some run-ins with some big celebrities uh that he told us about and um we went through some yeah some big bartender complaints these are um ones that i didn't ask him jd I had, these are leftovers okay can you believe i'm, I'm so fertile that i have leftovers <laughs> okay. yes which is the which you think is the worst of these because uh, you were a bartender too. Yeah. yeah customer yeah. complaining when you ask them for ID. Uh, customer asking for the usual and looking offended when you say you don't know who they are. <laughs> or, and this one is me, not that I've ever complained about this, but at times I would have liked to. Customer complaining about the kind of glass the drink is served in. You know, you mm. order a cocktail, expecting it to come in a, a rocks glass or something, and it, comes and it ends up like being that. up and it's in that Nick and Nora, and, and you pick it off the bar and your hand is shaking and the water is splashing over the end like a someone getting into a tiny hot tub it's a, that nick and nora is is like the martini glass with the, it's like it got a stem but is curved yeah like yeah it's kind of like a martini yeah. glass shorter stouter more rounded right yeah that's the worst that's you think that's the worst, the worst glass it's the worst glass but you need it because the surface area is wide at the top so for I, certain uh, i don't know that's i get it i get why it exists but it is it's a little emasculating. Not to be old-fashioned, but... Yeah, I just don't like the hand feel. It's very tippy. It's very... Exactly. Yeah. yeah, especially if you had already a couple drinks. <laughs> uh, though, though you know, maybe that'll make your hand steadier. If, that may, if drinking makes your hand steadier, you got a problem. Yeah, yeah. Talk okay, so what's the worst of all those? Yeah, the ID, regular, yeah. who you don't know, or yeah. uh, complaining about the glass. Yeah, probably the regular. Yeah, the regular who who does has that ever it? happened to you? Oh yeah, oh like a lot. Really? Yeah. So like, that so they know you. You're very recognizable. I mean, you didn't have this huge beard. No, uh, but they obviously thought that I knew them, so they knew me. Right. And they would sit down and be like, "Yeah, I'll just take a, you know you know what I want." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you try to guess? <laughs> no, I go like. Uh, well, I have done that. I've been, I've done like, uh, margarita. And then they go, no, Molson Canadian. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, it's like a fucking draft beer. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, usually it's just awkward. It's just yeah. like, I don't know. You're, you're, you're awkward. You don't like being in awkward situations where you can't leave. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, the ID thing is like, well, you know, it's policy. I don't know. It's weird getting carded here, you know? Well, it happened. Like I mean, I that get... didn't happen. You know what's a funny memory I have of you is <laughs> when we were in Ryerson, because you were um, older than us <laughs> while you were bartending in Europe for 10 years. That's why yes. you came to <laughs> college later than us. Mm -hmm. But we didn't, at least I didn't really know how old you were. But then I remember the first time we went to a bar together, I was 19. Yeah. Uh, was I 19? Yeah, I was 19. Uh, or no, I was actually 20 because my birthday's in October. And um, they obviously were carting me and everyone we were with because they were a year younger. And then they carted you and you were like, whoa, <laughs> I haven't been carted in 10 years. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Um, but now you still get, now it's like 15 years later and you're still getting carted in Atlanta. Yeah. Because that's America. It's a thing. Like they'll, they just they'll card, card like everybody. my parents. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess, whatever. It's, I guess it's just easier to do everyone than to kind of leave it up to the cashier to have to like be like, oh, you look old enough. That's exactly right. And then you get to say, oh, bless your heart, dear, for thinking that I'm <laughs> under 21. <laughs> All right, JD, we did it. Did we? We did it. Is this I mean, a... this is not a mini sode. <laughs> this is oh. not a half pint. Um this is that pint of Guinness I was describing at the beginning that with too much head, but you're going to rush. So you just say, all right, just give it to me now. It's only three quarters full. <laughs> I think we went like 55 minutes last time. 
or fi- 44. So that's 10 right. minutes left. Maybe that's so you're happy thing. with 45 minutes? Well, I was happy with everything we discussed. I didn't think it, that we were like trying to fill time. And I thought yeah. everything was interesting. It flowed from one thing to the other. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, we left a big topic on the table. But I think we can come back to it. We can come back to it. Yeah. And uh, next week, instead of 54 minutes to 40, 40, 55 minutes to 45 minutes, it'll be 35 minutes. Wait, you're, these are going to get shorter? Yep. This is not going to make until people happy. In, this is, you're in. the only person that this is going to make happy. I'd like to get these tight enough that we come on. I say, <laughs> this is a companion show. Is this good? We do some follow-up. Email us. <laughs> Listen to the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs> That's when you'll know. No, no, no. We're going to keep it light and tight. Light and tight. I love it. Um, all right. Just a last reminder. Email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Send us emails. Send us good topics. Subscribe everywhere. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. This was JD and Matt reaching out from the great beyond. We'll see you next week. <laughs>